Assalamualaikum. In this video, me, Nabila Naima, with my friends Atika Nabila, Nur Saliha, Nur Nabila and Muhammad Fikr Fikih will be presenting our legal forum regarding the impact of COVID-19 for the tourism and hospitality industry. Let me start with the introduction. Tourism has seen as a key mechanism in development and competent driver in countries' economies. However, due to the present epidemic of coronavirus, the economy has declined and affected the tourism and hospitality industry as it suffered the greatest loss because no movement of travelling inbound and outbound. Malaysia recorded their first case on January 25, 2020 and directly forced the industry to shut down for safety reasons. With that, Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture revealed that the national tourist expenditure declined 41.5% from 21.4 billion ringgit in 2019 to 12.5 billion ringgit in January to March 2020. Fortunately, UNWTO has introduced restart tourism that required all countries to reopen with standard guidelines that focus on health and safety measures to regain tourist confidence. Therefore, standard operating procedures are the required actions for people to follow and prevent this virus spread. As the main goal of this study is to highlight the issues and how the Malaysian government dealing with COVID-19, several regulations has been issued under Prevention and Control of Infections, Disease Act 1988, uh, second, the Panel Court and Communication and Multimedia Act 1993 and the third one is the Regulations on Emergency Essential Powers Ordinance 2021. I will pass to Nur Nabila to continue. Thank you, Sister Naima. Next, we'll be on the overview of COVID-19, which will focus on the history and types of coronavirus and also the impact of COVID-19 on the tourism and hospitality industries. Firstly, coronavirus are a diverse group of virus. Some of them are responsible for the common illness in humans meanwhile other infected by the animals including bats, camels and cattle. According to the experts, SARS-CoV-2 is thought to have originated in bats. That is also how the coronavirus caused Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, which called MERS, and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, which called SARS, became. SARS-CoV-2 infected persons in one of Wuhan's open-air wet markets. Customers may buy fresh meats and seafood from them as well as animals that are slaughtered on the spot. SARS-CoV-2 affected individuals who had no direct contact with animals as it spread both inside and outside of China. This means that the infection was transmitted from one person to another. Currently, the virus is spread throughout the world, implying that individuals are unknowingly receiving and transmitting the coronavirus. Next is the type of COVID-19. Scientists have divided coronavirus into four subgroupings called Alpha, Beta, Gamma and Delta. There are seven viruses that can infect people, which are 229E Alpha, NL63 Alpha, OC43 Beta, MERS-CoV MERS, SARS-CoV SARS, and SARS-CoV-2, which causes the COVID-19. Moving on to the next slide, which is the impact of COVID-19 on the tourism and hospitality. All countries around the world is affected with this virus, including Malaysia. Therefore, there are many sectors, especially tourism and hospitality industry, affected due to COVID-19, such as hotels, FMB, transportation, and airlines. Travel restrictions, border closure, event cancellation, quarantine requirement, and the risk of disease transmission have all posed significant challenge to the tourism and hospitality industry. Airlines has been identified as an amplifying and prolonging factor for virus and this sector has been significant reduction as the necessity for personal safety and survival has become vital. For example, Malaysia Airlines is one of the airlines that suffer a huge loss and face the risk of bankruptcy. The aviation industry has been the worst hit by the COVID-19 pandemic from travel restriction to flight cancellation. 
one of the impacts of COVID-19 to Malaysia Airlines is reduced staff salary. Malaysia Airlines has reduced in size its operations, introduced salary cuts and given unpaid leave to over 13,000 of its staff since the MCO's establishment. Malaysia Airlines is reducing senior management salary by 10% since March 2020 and according to Group CEO Captain Isham Ismail, adding that they will no longer get allowance. Next, I will pass to Sister Atika to continue. Thank you, Sister Noramila. Now I will explain on the application of laws and regulations. In this section, there will be three applications of laws and regulations that can be used according to the impact of COVID-19 for the tourism and hospitality industry, which are prevention and control of infection disease, Act 1988, Panel Code and Communication and Multimedia, Act 1993, and also Emergency Essential Powers, No to Ordinance 2021. Based on the first aid, which is Prevention and Control of Infection Disease Act 1988, based on Section 1, Subsection 2, this aid shall come into force on a date to be appointed by the Minister by notification in the Gazette, and the Minister may appoint different dates for the coming into force of this act or of different provision thereof in different part of Malaysia. Thus, there is five sections have been chosen which can be related to the topic which are Section 10, Subsection 1, Section 11, Subsection 1, Subsection 3, Clause A, Clause B, Section 22, Subsection B, Section 24, Subsection A, and Section 25. For the Section 10, Requirement to Notify Infection Disease Subsection 1, every adult occupant of any house in which any infectious disease appears and every person in charge of or in the company of and every person not being a medical practitioner attending on any person suffering from or who has died of an infectious disease shall upon becoming aware of the existence of such disease with the least practicable delay notify the officers in charge of the nearest district health office or government health facility or police station or notify the nearest village head of the existence of such disease. For section 11, declaration of an affected local area, subsection 1, if the minister is satisfied that there is an outbreak of an infectious disease in any area in Malaysia or that any area in Triton with an epidemic of any infectious disease, he may by order in the Gazette declare such area to be an affected local area. Subsection 3. During the continuance in force of an order made under subsection 1, it shall be lawful for any authorized officer to direct any person or class or category of persons living in an affected local area or in any part thereof to subject him, self or then self, clause A to treatment or immunization. Clause B to isolation, observation or surveillance, the period of which being specified according to circumstance. Section 22 offends generally. Subsection B, any person who disobey any lawful order issued by any authorized officer or breach any rule under this act commits an offense. Section 24, Offence Penalty Subsection A, any person guilty of an offence under this Act for which no specific penalty is provided shall be liable on conviction in respect of a first offence to imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years or two fine or two both. For Section 25, Compounding of Offences the Director General or any public officer authorized for this purpose by him in writing may compound any offence under this Act or any regulation made under this Act which has been prescribed by regulation as compoundable by collecting from the offender a sum of money not exceeding 1,000 ringgits. For the second act, which is Panel Code and Communication and Multimedia Act 1993, this act is basically to provide for and to regulate the converging communication and multimedia industry and for incidental matters. Some sections have been chosen, such as Section 241, 
subsection B and section 242 for the reference of the fake news that have been sharing by the person pertaining to COVID-19. For section 241, offence for giving false and misleading statement. Subsection B, a person who knowingly gives false information, commits an offence and shall on conviction be liable to a fine not exceeding 20,000 ringgit or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 6 months or to both. For section 242, general offence and penalty, every omission or neglect to comply with and every act done or attempt to be done contrary to this act or its subsidiary legislation or any written instrument made under this act or in breach of condition subject to which any license have been granted or assignment issued shall be an offence against this act or its subsidiary legislation and for every such offence where the penalty is not otherwise specifically provided for the offender shall in addition to the forfeiture or anything sized be liable to a fine not exceeding 100,000 ringgit or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 2 years or to both. For the third aid which is emergency essential powers not to ordinance 2021, this ordinance have been promulgated by the Yang Bertuan Agong pursuant to clause 2B of Article 150 of the Federal Constitution due to ensure the safety and security of society, economic life was guaranteed from the pandemic of COVID-19 which is dangerous and could threaten someone's life and stability of the country. Thus, two sections which is applicable to prevent the tourism and hospitality industry will be affected by the impact of COVID-19. First is Section 4, Creating, Offering, Publishing, Fake news or publication containing fake news. Subsection 1. Any person who, by any means, with intent to cause or which is likely to cause fear or alarm to the public or to any section of the public, creates, offers, publishes, prints, distributes, circulates, or disseminates any fake news or publication containing fake news, commits an offense, and shall on conviction be liable to a fine not exceeding 100,000 ringgit or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 3 years or to both. And in this case of the continuing offence to a further fine not exceeding 1,000 ringgit for every day during which the offence continues after conviction. For the section 7, court may order for removal of publication containing fake news Subsection 1. Any person affected by a publication containing fake news may make an ex parte application to the court for an order to remove such publication. We move to the latest SOPs for the tourism and hospitality industry. According to the National Security Council Malaysia NFC website, there is some protocol and activities that have been provided for the tourism and hospitality industry according to its latest standard operating procedures SOPs for PKP which are providing my sejahtera or log book for workers and customer details, using one meter sign to ensure social distancing, Providing hand sanitizers and sink with soap in common areas. Providing guidelines, do and don't in the strategic area for the customers and workers to avoid the spreading of COVID-19. Appoint a coordinator among employees. Providing face masks and hand sanitizer for all workers. Requires the use of face masks by customers. Cleaning and this infections of public facilities such as toilets in the area general premise is implemented at least three times a day prohibition in some areas such as gymnasium prayer room meeting room and training room prohibition in using some facilities such as bar lounge karaoke jacuzzi sauna spa and swimming pool next i will explain the recent issues of covid 19 the first is the fake news pertaining to COVID-19. The COVID-19 outbreak has been accompanied by a flood of fake news and misleading information about the virus, especially on social media. 
Indeed, the World Health Organization (WHO) has warned of an ongoing epidemic or an excess of information, especially misinformation, during an epidemic due to the transmission of false information about the virus. Malaysia is also not left behind with the abundance of fake news pertaining to COVID-19 are circulating in the society. Misinformation about COVID-19 on social media, such as the special military helicopters which spray, will spray pesticide from the sky all over the country and all of the citizens are required to stay at home in the first image. Uh, this is one of the fake news that goes viral among the citizens for a couple of weeks after the government implemented the MCO for the first time to curb the spreading of COVID-19 in this country. Besides, there is also fake news regarding the vaccine, which is AstraZeneca. It is due to the several reports cited by the Council of Muslim Ulama in Indonesia declaring that the COVID-19 AstraZeneca is illegal because its manufacturing process are using the type seen from the pig pancreas. However, the Minister of Health Malaysia, Datuk Seri Dr. Adham Baba, refuted that statement by saying that the COVID-19 AstraZeneca vaccine does not contain any product of animal origin or prohibited substance. Nas is a former of Nasheed singer in Malaysia named Suhaimi Saad also spread the fake news about the vaccine which is it can cause death to those who take it. He even shared the fake list of death cases involving those who took the vaccine injection in his Instagram. However, the Ministry of Health Malaysia stated that the list is fake and not all of those dead cases are due to the vaccine injection. The second issue is non-compliance with laws and SOP. The trend of new daily COVID-19 cases started to show an increase since the early last April 2021. Most of the cases are sporadic, showing infection occurring in the community which put them at the risk of transmission of infection to the community if isolation, civilians, and observation orders are not carried out in strict accordance to the procedure. Currently, the way to prevent and control the spreading of COVID-19 are by wearing face masks, social distancing of at least 1 meter, and maintaining the personal hygiene. However, there are a lot of people in Malaysia that do not comply with the law an SOP by the government. For example, a burger seller has been compound 50,000 by the police for floating the SOP of MCO by operating beyond the 10 p.m. limit. In fact, this is not his first offense. His first offense. He first his first offense. Before this, he was issued with another compound for committing the similar offense. The other, cases, the other case is involving a Malaysian celebrity named Nelofa and his husband that has been breaking the SOP and crossed state borders for a few times. The couple was charged in Saramban Magistrate's Court on 20 May for crossing interstate to visit a carpet seller in Nilai Negeri Sembilan on 2 May 2021. The TV personalities were bought with failing to scan their detail via my suggestion before entering the premise, while his husband was additionally charged for not wearing the face mask. The next case is about a man who is wearing the pink wristband was arrested at a restaurant at Bandar Tasik Puteri Rawang for branch the COVID-19 mandatory quarantine. That 52 years old man has been ordered to undergo home quarantine for 14 days after the COVID-19 screening at KLAA and while waiting for test result. He was investigated under Section 269 of the Penal Code for the offence of committing a negligence act likely to spread the infection or any disease dangerous to life. 
Next, we will continue on the impact of COVID-19. The first impact is to the tourism industry. COVID-19 has affected the plan of Malaysia in tourism in 2020. The plan of visit Malaysia had been cancelled due to the pandemic. The, the increasing of the cases of COVID-19 led to the cancellation of many tours in Malaysia. The arrival of tourists in Malaysia dropped about 83.4% than 2019. The result of this is economy of Malaysia in tourism is dropping and cannot sustain for a long time. Next is impact to the airlines. Airline is the most affected mode of transportation by COVID-19. This is due to people cannot travel to avoid from the infection of the COVID-19 that lead to the bankruptcy. In order to prevent from that, most of the airlines like AirAsia and Malaysia Airlines execute salary cut to the workers, give unpaid leave and fire them. Other than that, hotel business also affected during COVID-19. This is because most, uh, most of the people cannot use hotel service due to movement control order that have been executed by the Malaysian government. Furthermore, more than 100,000 rooms have been cancelled during January to March in 2019. The hoteliers need to refund back uh, customer money that makes them very difficult to survive during the pandemic. Plus, when government approve people to use hotel service, they need to add more costs to buy sanitizer liquid, gloves and protection to protect their guests and workers. Lastly is the impact to the food and beverage. The effect of it is certain demand for the food and product is declining, such as beef. This is due to the closing of the restaurant and people more focusing on to the, buy the basic needs in order to save their money. Next, I will pass to another presenter. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Fiki. Moving on to the first recommendation, which is from Government of Malaysia itself. The COVID-19 epidemic had a negative impact on the country's tourism sectors with only 4.2 million foreign visitors' arrivals and 12.6 billion ringgit in tourism earnings expected in 2020. But due to COVID-19 outbreak, Malaysia's tourism industry lost around 45 billion ringgit in visitors spent in the first half of the years, with a decline of 68.2 and 69.8% respectively, compared to the same time last year. Therefore, there are strategies of governments in helping the tourism and hospitality sectors. Firstly, through transformation agenda. According to Datuk Sri Nancy Shukri, had stated that the ministry had developed a reform strategy that will focus on the growing income, attracting partnership and investment, empowering local community, and assuring the industry's long-term viability and also the resilience. Second strategy is government incentive. Government incentives play an important role in boosting the domestic tourism and hospitality industry. The government has offered incentives and support to tourism and cultural industry players through economic stimulus package such as Prihatin, Prihatin SMEs and the National Economic Recovery Plan, Penjana. This funding is not only intent to secure the continuance or survival of existing operations, but it may also be utilized to improve industry goods and services. To stimulate domestic tourism, Prihatin provides special individual tax reduction of up to 1,000 ringgit for domestic tourist spending. Tour guide licensed by the ministry have also received one time assistance of 600 ringgit with over 7,000 tour guides benefits in total for a total of more than 4, 4 billion ringgit Malaysia. Through Penjana, government allocating 1 billion ringgit Malaysia for the Penjana Tourism Financing Program to assist transformation activities by small and medium-sized firm. Budget hotels, register homestay, chalet, resort all get all the benefits. Next, I will pass to Sister Saliha to continue on the next recommendation. Recommendation from other countries. 
According to World Travel and Tourism Council 2021, there are various initiatives and policies has been taken from other countries to help the tourism and hospitality industry during the COVID-19 pandemic. Hence, Malaysia can adopt and adapt these policies and implement it. First is from Singapore, providing support for professional environmental cleaning and disinfection costs for hotels. Next, create clean certification to provide assurance to locals and visitors of tourism remain of tourism venues and facilities implementing prevention measures. Next, waive the licensing fees for STB licensed hotel, travel agency and tourist guide. They reduce 50% of the industry participation fees for STB lead trade show. They also enhance the training scheme and funding up to 90% of training cost fees and trainers fees. Lastly, they provide salary support through Workforce Singapore up to 70%. The next country is UK, United Kingdom. First, protecting the livelihood of workers. Financial help must be granted to protect the incomes of the millions of workers in several difficulty. Second, fiscal support extend vital unlimited interest-free loan. Government must extend vital, unlimited interest-free loans to global travel and tourism companies as well as the millions of small and medium-sized businesses as a stimulus, as a stimulus to prevent them from collapse. Next is the injection liquidity and cash flow assistance to support the tourism sectors. Cash flow assistance to support players big and small to the travel and tourism sector is critical as well as to offer targeted support to affected industry within the sector. And the last one is, 20, is 12 month business rate holiday for all retail, hospitality and leisure businesses. The next country is United Arab Emirates, UAE. The government provides a 25 to 50% subsidy for staff accommodation costs and employment permits. Next is the collaboration, establish official industry body to provide forum and unify the voice. In terms of sustainability, national and or emirate level hotel development strategy and efficiency, re-examination of zoning and report recommends introducing legislation. And the last one is the safety, create legislation that require hotelier to establish rainy day fund or mandatory employment insurance. Thank you, Sister Nur Saliha. Now I will explain on the Makasid Asharia. The definition of Makasid Asharia. Makasid means objective and purpose. However, Asharia means obligation, prohibition, and do and don'ts. So the purpose of Makasid Asharia is comprises those benefits, welfare, and advantage behind the revelation of Islamic laws. So, the relationship between Makassid Al-Sharia and COVID-19, Makassid Al-Sharia has been implemented as one of the alternatives to prevent the spreading of COVID-19. Thus, five principles of Makassid Al-Sharia has been em emphasized as a guide which is in line between SOPs and Sharia law. So, the five principles of Makassid Al-Sharia is under the Ruriat necessities. The first is the preservation of life, if enough. Second is the preservation of religion, Hif al Din. Third is the prevention of wealth, Mal. Fourth is the prevention of family, Hif al Nas. And fifth is the prevention of intellect, Hif al Aq. So it can be related with the standard operating procedure SOPs, which is can be used as the prevent the virus from spreading among the people by closing some place temporary which is so important under the prevention of life and the second is they requires all to wear face masks also important for the prevention of life and charity and sadaqah which is the prevention of wealth thank you sister atika next recommendation is yasa sharia the decision made by the Malaysian government so far is in line with the spirit of Sharia, according to several Islamic legal maxims discussed by scholars through Siasa Sharia. One of the scholars, 
Sheikh Abdul Wahab Khalaf conclude that siasa syariah is a knowledge that analyse management or governing concerns in legal, policy and systems elements according to Islamic principles even if there is no specific shara of evidence that support it. The first action is implementation of moment control order or known as MCO as preventing damage and harm from occurring will bring stability to the community's life. Thus, the government used the MCO as preventive measures. For example, the government revised the Act 342 of the Federal Constitution to specify the compound rate imposed on offenders who violate the MCO and SOPs. Second is quarantine, which is the best measures to avoid greater harm. And third is a declaration of emergency was um, implemented with the consent of Yang Dipertuan Agong in accordance with Clause 6A of Article 150 of the Federal Constitutions and effective starting from January 12 until August 31st, 2021 to allow the government deal with the virus more effectively. With that, the government impositions the MCO is an action in the form of siyasa sharia. Next is prevent the social panic. Therefore, it helped to prevent social panic whereby many assistance of groups taking the opportunity to do ijtihad in determining the law to cause confusion in society while they do not have any qualification to do so. For example, the government is closely monitoring the anti-vaccine propaganda through social media today who have doubt about vaccines, especially the COVID-19 vaccines. Second is the Ministry of Health or known as MOH issued an announcement uh, advising the public not to be fooled by any advertisements, claims or statements on COVID-19 including the internet unless the sources is from uh, the MOH itself. That's all from me. I will pass to Fikul Fikir. Now I will continue to the next recommendation on the e-tourism. So why e-tourism? E-tourism is basically virtual tourism. Virtual tourism is the suitable type of tourism that can be done during this pandemic. This is due to, to prevent the from crowd gathering that might be uh, become a chance for the virus to spread in. Virtual tourism is using internet as the platform. It provides tourism experience without actually go to that place. It's focusing more on the hearing size and sense. The advantage of it is it is cheap than normal tourism due to tourists will not pay other fees such as airplane tickets and tax of the places. Next, the, the disadvantage of virtual tourism is it is not benefits to the host destination. This is because it will give benefits to the people who organize it. It is different from the normal tourism when people directly pay to the host to, next, to the host destination. Next, it is not available to anyone. This is because some of the part of the world have weak signal of the internet. Internet is essential due to virtual tourism depends on it to operate. And then I think that's all from me. I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you. The next recommendation is Travel Bubble. Travel Bubble is, is also known as Travel Corridors or Corona Corridors are essentially an exclusive collaboration between two or more countries that have shown significant success in confining and combating the COVID-19 epidemic within their resp respective borders. Travel Bubble would be able to help both countries flagging the tourism industry. As CNN points out, Australians make up to almost 40% of international arrival to New Zealand, with tourism is that country's biggest export industry. Travel Bubble might be an effective way to open up the country and serve as a model for other countries if a proper health safeguards are followed and the technology is in place. Malaysia also has the potential to implement the travel bubble once the COVID-19 cases are under control. We can collaborate with the other countries such as Singapore and Indonesia since they are the nearest country with us. In fact, 
Singapore also has a good reputation in managing the COVID-19 pandemic. For the time being, Malaysia only implement the domestic travel bubble since the border is still closed and COVID-19 cases is high. First, tourists travel in between green zone areas. Second, they use public transport and tourism vehicles. Third, all allowed activities except for those listed in the prohibited list. Thank you, Nursaniha. So we move to the conclusions. So the coronavirus not only impacted tourism and hospitality industry, but also employment and mental health. As this disease continued to spread over the world on unpredictable path, the speed and strength of recovery will be determined by the country's health, humanitarian and socioeconomic laws. We have learned that the deep-rooted disparities exposed by the COVID-19 issue will only worsen unless long-term structural changes are made. To add to dealing with the crisis immediate consequences, the government has the opportunity to adopt laws aimed at attaining social justice and improving well-being and health of universal human beings. And these are some of our reference that we refer for our study. I think that's all from our group. Thank you.